Hi, how are you? It's Luna here from Barcelona, the host of the Spanish podcast Lunaticoi. Well, I'm back again uh, with a short English document. In this one, I sat down with uh, Max Caden from Hodel Hodel to talk about their recent uh, launch, uh, their lending KYC free platform, Lend. It was, it was, we were supposed to record it uh, at launch, uh, but due to complications in, in our agendas, we had to postpone it. And I think that the result was great because I had the chance to, to talk with Max uh, about not only the idea and what, they, what are their intentions, but uh, to ask how is it going? Is, it, uh, is people using it? And yeah, uh, Max was very happy about uh, their first week's results. So I think it's a, it's a very interesting document in which we also discuss different topics, like for example, uh, why they decided to use stable coins. This pod, as all the other ones in Spanish, is sponsored by Hodl Hodl, Bitrefill and Shift Crypto. If you want to stack stats from other peers in a safe way, low fees and without leaking your personal data, you need to know hodlhodl.com. I use them weekly, I go there, check what offers have placed the other peers, and I take the one that suits me better. After two clicks, uh, I know that sats are already on the way, and it's just a matter of time that I receive them. A very easy and trustless service. Go have a look at hodlhodl.com and start stacking sats without KYC. If you're a true Bitcoiner trying to live in the Bitcoin economy, you will need Bitrefill, the service that allows you to live with your Bitcoin. In Bitrefill.com, you can buy gift cards, phone refills, and lining services with a few clicks and without KYC. Follow the link in the description and get surprised by their amazing catalog. And if you are a Bitcoin holder and you are thinking about leveling up your security, you should have a look at Bitbox2, the hardware wallet produced by Shift Crypto that is ideal for both beginners and pros with its easy to use device and its amazing multi-sig performance. Have a look at it following the link in the description below and get yours with a 10% discount using the promo code LUNATICOIN when purchasing one. Okay, hope you're ready for a really nice talk uh, with uh, Max. It's only 50 minutes long compared to my close to two hours Spanish podcast. So yeah, hope you enjoy it. And I let you with Max and len.hodlhodl.com. Here's the podcast. Hi, Max. Hi, Luna. Hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, how are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, I'm preparing myself for Christmas season <laughs> already. Oh, really? But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm joking. We never actually uh, have a proper holidays. Always working. So hmm. uh, and we enjoy that actually. Yeah. I enjoy myself. You know, I, sometimes yeah. I, I, I sometimes I um, you know I get beef with my relatives that say you need to like you know enjoy your weekends but anyway so we're yeah. good mostly but anyway the christmas spirit somehow i'm waiting for a for a year to be to to be ended because i think that uh, uh, predominantly the year was good at least for us but uh, on a global scale i think everyone can agree with me that the year was pretty bad Yeah, I, I was going to say that I don't know why you want this uh, year to finish <laughs> in, a, in, in a joke way, of course, <laughs> because uh, everything that could happen has happened. And sometimes even I think about uh, that the year began with uh, the accident, the helicopter accident of Kobe Bryant. And it was yeah. like, oh, my God, you know, what a disaster, what a beginning of the year. And yeah. yeah, of course, it's sad that Kobe is not with us, but come on, what was to come after that? It's not, not even in yeah. a science fiction movie. Uh, I'm, I'm still waiting for, for, for aliens to come to Earth in 2020, but I don't know whether this prediction will happen or not. But if, if there will be aliens, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> descending to, to, to Earth, then most probably we will have a bingo. Yeah. And this year will be... If we had to see aliens at some point of our lives, this is the time to happen. Yeah, yeah, true. 
good. So, Max, uh, let me say that uh, we have been trying to record this podcast now for a few weeks, but uh, first, uh, some problems of schedule. Later, my voice disappeared. So, yeah, finally, I'm, I'm happy to sit down with you and, and record about your new product uh, that uh, was launched, you were telling me before, uh, three weeks ago only. It seemed a little yeah. bit longer in my, in my head. But but yeah, uh, so first of all, let me ask you before we jump in land, uh, let me ask you about Hodel Hodel. How, how is Hodel Hodel doing in this uh, pandemic era? Uh, we're actually doing pretty fine. Um, we are uh, we're growing, definitely we're growing and um, we're like becoming stronger in some uh, markets that we didn't expect we will go there or we will be popular like for example latin america mm -hmm. uh, one of the regions that we are growing and becoming stronger and stronger we have a pretty solid amount of people from latin america uh, predominantly from argentina venezuela and uh, and i think uh, mexico yeah mm -hmm. um asia also one of the regions that we are um we didn't expect that we will be there will be such a huge demand for such type of services that we provide or we ensure and um yeah of course so all uh, traditional markets are there like europe and uh, uh and eastern europe mostly of course so yeah we are uh, actually during this year we understood that we should uh we, we've been right all along about uh peer-to-peer -peer trading that it's way more demanded and it's actually useful for emerging markets because like 90 95 98 percent of uh uh, volumes uh, we have on HODL HODL is actually from emerging markets. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so HODL HODL itself trading part is growing. And uh, we've, uh, we've recently uh, complete a huge piece of redesigning of redesign of, of our platform. We, we're still going to uh, to redesign some of the crucial parts like uh, trading part but uh, in any sense this year uh, we've been lucky and pretty successful with our business mm. also i've seen some some nice integrations in uh, in for example blue wallet so... yeah blue wallet added integrate because we we've like in january we released our api and the guys yeah. from blue wallet was uh, we actually started uh, talking about integration in year 2019 during a uh, lightning conference in berlin i met with um, blue wallet uh, lead developer mm -hmm. igor from um, from blue wallet and um, we we've discussed he told that he's big fan of multisig and he's willing although blue wallet is is mostly famous for lightning um and they became famous thanks to the lightning but he mentioned that he's a big fan of multisig as well and uh, we started you know thinking about we actually announced during that uh, right away during that um conference that we will we're going to integrate together as soon as we release api and that's actually what happened and we actually see pretty solid figures uh in terms of activity coming from blue wallet so yeah, it was a big, uh, big step. Uh, and yeah, we still have our prediction markets <laughs> as well, yeah, which was, yeah, they were launched in 2018. Honestly, we didn't have time to develop it, it properly. But in 2021, uh, one of the main points on our roadmap is actually uh, completely rework or redevelop the prediction markets that we have. So there will be a new version of prediction markets. And hopefully this will be also pretty significant improvement, uh, not only for, for our ecosystem, for HODL HODL's ecosystem, but also for um, all ecosystem, all Bitcoin ecosystem. I'm not a big fan actually that like the, this year gave us like a uh, year since we launched prediction markets gave us opportunity to understand that the, 
actually there's still not so much demand for prediction markets we've been hoping uh i recently like spoke with uh, matt odo from tells from the crypt podcast and he mentioned that he was extremely bullish on prediction markets and we were also extremely bullish on prediction markets but unfortunately not the case yet but anyway we'll see uh you just mentioned prediction markets uh, you explain how is hodl hodl and both uh, are based on on a really nice uh, system to make use of the bitcoin capabilities in in multi signature and yeah. and re recently 3 weeks ago uh, another product based on the same amazing uh, uh multi sig contract that you that you created uh land yeah uh, could you explain for somebody we are seeing now in the screen the the the, the website uh, but uh, could you explain yeah. for somebody who has been i don't know where and <laughs> and doesn't know what is uh, land uh, could you explain what is it and and also a little bit of how does it work well yeah land is a peer to peer actually everything is written there global peer to peer bitcoin backed non custodial lending platform so we use the same multi signature tag uh or smart contract if you want to say uh on, on top of bitcoin uh and it's actually global marketplace for peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending and borrowing so if you want to borrow money uh, you can go online you can create your offer or, or accept any offer there is on your own terms like let's say you're happy to borrow uh five thousand uh in teaser stable coins for one month and you are happy to pay 1% interest on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the interesting part is that actually you use Bitcoin in this case as a collateral. So you lock uh, your Bitcoin in a multisig, uh, which has three keys. One goes to the lender, one goes to the borrower and one goes to HODL HODL in case of a dispute. And you actually lock this and then you uh, you receive a stable coins from the lender. Uh, you use these stable coins and in, in a one month time you repay it. And one month is just an example. We have a period up to 12 months, starting okay. from one day to up to 12 months, uh, different amounts, any amount basically you want. If you will find a counterparty, we don't have any limitations on that. You can borrow in stable coins and we specifically uh only using stable coins for a loan issuance why because uh well i already told us to uh, in one podcast that if we bitcoiners uh we believe that both stable coins or other altcoins and fiat uh, are shit coins then at least stable coins they have this um interesting thing being more peer-to-peer -peer than uh, fiat money because like if you're transferring teaser then you're doing this from one wallet to another wallet so uh, mm -hmm. and if you're transferring uh, any other fiat currency uh, in most of the time you're doing this through middlemen and not only one middleman there there could be a couple of them so there's a friction and we decided we will remove that friction so you can go on lending platform of HODL HODL and uh, borrow versus um, borrow uh, money with stable coins, with Deezer, uh, with DAI, with Paxos, and with USDC. Okay. Uh, this is interesting. So you, <laughs> let's say that you can ask uh, f uh, for a credit, let's say, in stable coins and yeah. your collateral uh, is bitcoin uh, yeah. i suppose that uh, you have to over collateralize your yeah your loans. of course of uh, course could you explain like which are the possibilities because i think that uh, in you have the possibilities to uh, adjust uh, so it's not a yeah. let's say maker though it makes you depends on the asset but it makes you over collateralize by a 50 percent no a 30 percent i think at least yeah so uh, which are the the ratios uh, uh, here in in land so in our case it's uh, ltv which is loan to value ratio is from 30 percent to 70 percent Again, mm -hmm. if you're not fine, and this is the, the thing that I want to specifically mention for anyone who is like 
who will be willing to explore uh, our lending market. If you didn't find a proper offer, uh, if you are not, not okay with uh, terms that are expressed in offers that are published, you're absolutely free to do your own offer to create it. It's actually pretty simple in terms of creation offer. We put a lot of effort towards user experience and user interface. So it only takes you like 30 seconds to create an offer. It's free. It's on your own terms. And uh, hopefully someone will accept that. Of course, if you're not crazy person saying that uh, I, I'm, I want to pay 1% interest for 12 months, uh, you know, using other, someone mm -hmm. other's money, then, then most probably it doesn't work like that. But anyway, um, yeah, you need to be over collateralized always because we need to protect the lender interest as well. So it's uh, LTV ratio is from 30% to 70%, which is uh, which meaning like, let's say you want to borrow 7,000 USDT. Uh, so the collateral that you need to put in, uh, into like uh, amount of Bitcoin that you need to put in, in a collateral uh, must be worth at least 10,000 uh, 10,000 USDT. So basically, in order to receive 7,000 uh, USDT worth of loan, you need to put in uh, a Bitcoin worth of 10,000 or even more if you want to like to be safe from uh, from LTV ratio rising at some point because of the price uh, because the price of Bitcoin is actually falling. So. Yeah, so this is how it works. So there, of, co there of course, will be over, everything is over collateralized, but uh, there's also interest of the lender who is not willing to lose his money. Hmm. Uh, I've been thinking about it. And, and of course, I, I reviewed in the past some other uh, lending platforms, centralized or based on, on Ethereum, like MakerDAO or centralized like uh, Leven. Uh, uh, and and of and of course in Ethereum you get Dai in exchange, so it's kind yeah. of like it's going in the same direction of the question I'm going to ask you now. Uh, in 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 Leven or BlockFi you get uh, like uh, dollars or euros. Uh, what I was thinking when when thinking about land is that okay, I put a Bitcoin, I get uh, if Bitcoin is costing 10 k, okay, uh, so. You get seven thousand USDT, perfect. Yeah. But uh, I, I was thinking about the main case, no, the use case. Uh, I don't know if you have any feedback already, like uh, if you know it uh, because they told you. But what is being the main case of borrowing um, uh, using LEN? What do people do with those uh, USDT die? Uh, so far, is uh, having extra liquidity. So basically, people are all just increasing their position in, into Bitcoin, for example. Most of the, of the people are increasing their position into Bitcoin. So they borrow extra USDT and then they go on, uh, on any other exchange and buy some more Bitcoin with that, uh, with the aim that we are now in, in, in the beginning of bullish cycle and they will earn eventually more. So basically, the, the, the main use case at the moment is liquidity, trading liquidity. It's kind of like going on, on, on I'm not an expert on trading, but it sounds something like uh, a, a manual BitMEX, no? Yeah, kind of, kind of a manual non-custodial BitMEX. <laughs> Yeah, because th this is the, the important part, and, and you mentioned it before, uh, about why using uh, uh, stable coins, no? Um, yeah. Uh, either, because this is maybe a good moment to ask you this, uh, you not, you are not only using uh, Ethereum-based uh, stable coins, you are also using uh, based on, on Liquid, right? Yeah, the, the actual Liquid was quite, and is yet at the moment, very popular um, blockchain uh, that is used by uh, our customers. So I would say that 50% of all loans are used uh, using liquid. So kind of, uh, which is, which is for us is pretty, we're pretty surprised to be honest. We were 
we're thinking that uh, teaser uh, on Ethereum uh, will be way more popular because, uh, well, obviously because the capitalization is there. Uh, mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of volumes in Ethereum, but actually, um, Bitcoiners prefer liquid-based solutions, which is surprise. I think, but which is good as well. It's good, and also it's smart in a in a thinking about fees, no? Because I I don't yeah. know if it, yeah. it yeah. was a problem yeah. when you started, but we have seen like crazy fees on, on Ethereum in the last yeah. months. So I suppose yeah. that on Liquid, it's something you don't have to worry. Like fees are still like a, like really yeah, pretty low, pretty low, nearly yeah. zero, yeah. no? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. And it's actually it's very fast and. Uh, you can also have a confidential transactions and which is also one of the points uh, as, as far as I understand why people prefer liquid. Hmm. It's been three weeks. Uh, how has it gone so far? Uh, do you have some, um, number, like, uh, are, you, are you happy with, uh, with it? Uh, yeah, honestly, we're, uh, well, you never can be happy and uh, like, you know, and be and be uh, like you know happy with yourself or with what you did. We already uh, like it's 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 two weeks uh, in this month, and we already bit, have reached our projected results that we have made for for ourselves for this month. So mm -hmm. basically, it's it twice with the twice smaller term, we already reached. Uh, results that we were thinking that we will reach in one month time in November. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, uh, we're pretty surprised. Demand is pretty huge. Uh, we were we were actually thinking that there will be lack of borrowers. Now we see that there's actually some of our biggest lenders that uh, was there from the beginning. They are already experiencing some shortages with with their funds with their funds, so they don't have money actually to lend. But anyway, new people are coming in. And um, yeah, so um, uh, another takeaway is that we were actually thinking that this solution will be more for macro micro lending, you know, small, uh, small lending amounts uh, for a smaller term. Now we see that people actually prefer midterm uh lending or even long-term lending like one month two months three months uh six mm -hmm. months sometimes and also the amounts are like one thousand two thousand three thousand something like that so uh this is also a surprise but in terms of results like in in 24 hours since our since we launched back in october we already had uh around five uh, 100 USDT liquidity, so half a mil of a million liquidity available on the platform. And uh, we already actually managed to issue uh, uh, the amount of, uh, not we, but the amount of uh, lending contracts or the volume of them is uh, basically, you can count it in six, six numbers. So uh, it's like uh, it's it's more than hundred thousand USDT. Mm -hmm. I would say it's closer to two two hundred thousand uh, USD USDT or USDC, whatever. They all are stable coins. So yeah, it's it's pretty pretty surprising. We actually see like huge demand for this for that type of services on the market. Interesting. Um... I want to ask you a couple of questions about finance, no? Because I, when there has been this time, like this crazy summer uh, of uh, yeah. DeFi in Ethereum, yeah, uh, yeah. Of course, I'm, 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 I'm always talking about Bitcoin, and I saw a lot of these attacks, no, from from both sides, and I try to always look things from a a, a neutral perspective, and I was asking a, a good friend of mine. Um, that works in finance and i was asking hey do you mind explaining me because maybe i lost something do you mind explaining me what is finance and he said yeah sure uh, finance is what happens when somebody wants uh, to borrow money and somebody else wants to lend it in exchange of uh, of an interest like yeah. all the service around this it's what is called finance so okay yeah. good so then i was thinking like um 
All right. You know, we have seen like this uh, big uh, growth uh, in, in, in DeFi, in decentralized finance on the Ethereum ecosystem. But is it, is it a good thing to try to, to have a, a decentralized finance? And first idea was like, yeah, it seems like a, something you would like to have. Uh, and then in, in that time, uh, I saw that you were having a, a conference in, in Magical Crypto Friends. Yeah. And and you were some you were saying something in 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 this regard, saying that uh, finance can be fully decentralized because uh, if we talk about land, land has yeah. the am amazing feature that it is it has it is uh, KYC free, but yeah. of course it. It is not centralized in the way that there is a custody because there is no yeah. custodial at any point. Yeah. But yeah, there is a, a central um, uh, actor uh, that is Hodel Hodel, no? So yeah. there, is, there, there is basically, I, would, I wouldn't say that Hodel Hodel is a central actor. It's just serving as one of the, uh, as an arbiter in case mm -hmm. of something mm -hmm. happens. Uh, I, I would say to you that, uh, most of the centralized DeFi platforms are centralized in different types of, in different sense. Uh, mm -hmm. The case uh, I would say about our lending platform, but it's, it's a website. So there's a central point of failure. We have a plan B, plan C, and in case if we're, for example, blocked in one of the regions that we're serving and all that stuff. Uh, but um, I would say that most of DeFi solutions and platforms are actually in some point they're centralized so they have a central points of failure and mm -hmm. um, uh, of course there are some that are striving and they're way more decentralized than others uh, and maybe there are some solutions that are actually purely decentralized or they will be purely decentralized in, I don't know, at some point in few months from now or in few years from now. I don't know, maybe. But uh, I actually identify three main or three whales, big whales that all DeFi ecosystem is standing on. And basically these three were being non-custodial, mm -hmm. uh, allowing people to, to do their financing operations anonymously or not having um uh, kyc and the third part was actually this is pretty interesting not having fiat because fiat as i mentioned it creates a friction doesn't mm -hmm. allow you to be purely peer-to-peer -peer because there's always a middleman which is a bank or a payment institution or a service provider whatever so yeah well, i've identified those three points and i told like if you have uh, those three points that you might be called a DeFi solution. But again, it's, all, it's also doubtful. And uh, I mentioned that uh, I don't believe in pure decentralization because uh, there are like some pain points in that. First of all, there's oracles. Uh, in terms of price oracles, it's kind of easy. You know, you can always... Uh, create a decentralized oracle and I know that many DeFi solutions are using them. But again, who will be uh, an arbiter if you will have any disputed case in that sense? So um, you can create like that. But again, there are solutions that they don't require any third party at all, any arbiters, anything like that. Like, for example, there's discrete log contracts, DLC, which are uh, you can build a prediction markets with them and they're pretty decentralized. But then again, who will uh, write the code? Who will be the software engineers? Who will be the team who will develop this stuff? And again, it's also a central point of fa failure. People behind the code, who are they? Can you somehow put a pressure on them? Can you close the software development company? Can you, there's, there's a lot of different aspects on that and you can always find solution, but you can always find uh, a, a points of failure. So that's what I'm talking about here. Mm. Yeah, I, I think that uh, 
thinking about uh, decentralizing finance uh, on, on Ethereum, they have done uh, good work. I think that it's uh, MakerDAO, for example, that has one hour delay in the price. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of like, uh, yeah, we are there is no arbiter so if you get liquidated you get liquidated but at least yeah. you have like kind of one hour gap to go and yeah. try to to bring in more uh, more collateral and so on uh, yeah. but it's but it's interesting what you basically are saying is that uh, you will never fully decentralize uh, finance or it seems very very difficult right this is uh, 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 basically i'm not i'm not saying I'm not saying that we will never fully decentralize finance. I'm actually, uh, I, I mentioned it in one of, in few of my interviews, we are going to build way more decentralized systems in the future. And we are going to add more decentralization to existing solution because, uh, well, in the end, we are, we are willing to do that. And we are willing to bring some, uh, more non-custodial technologies and and more decentralization. And again, we are, we have an ongoing process of open sourcing our uh, our some of our solutions. So this should also bring some some decentralization to some extent because if you are open source, anyone basically can create a bunch of copies of your product and distribute them how they want to do that. So it's kind of also uh, pretty pretty interesting thing to be safe uh, mm -hmm. and secure from, from some kind of at attacks. But what I'm saying at the moment that um, I wouldn't name uh, most of DeFi solutions at, at, at the, at, at existing at the moment that they are purely DeFi and they are truly decentralized uh, mm -hmm. solutions out there. So because again, there's always a human being behind any development out there and um, yeah uh, i think that was one of the reasons why satoshi uh, is satoshi you know and we don't know who is he or she or they uh, because if there's a person or a lot of person or several developers there's always a risk uh, what about uh, liquidations? Uh, I was just mentioning the ones about MakerDAO. I know many other centralized systems, uh, how they work. They have kind of like margin calls to the customer. Uh, how do they work in in in? Life? Yeah, we have we have four margin calls, uh, so it's a bit more bigger. It, it's uh, the amount of margin calls we have is larger actually than uh, on centralized platforms. Okay. Um, I know that industry standard standard is usually two, two margin mm -hmm. calls. We have four of them. We 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 notify you four times, and then if you don't do anything, uh, via email, uh, via via email, yes, at the moment. Okay. But we are improving our notification system, so soon uh, we will be able to do that also via Telegram, for example. Mm -hmm. So if you're not familiar, for example, on Hodo Hodo, we already have Telegram bot who notifies you in case you have a contract or in case something is changed or, or something like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but yeah, we notify four times. Um, you still have three different options uh, how to avoid liquidation. So option number one, which is an obvious one, you can repay your loan earlier. Like for example, you have money now and the loan is ending in one month time and you can just repay it. Option number two, you can um, repay part of your loan. So let's say you took a loan for 5,000, you have 2,000 now, you are sending 2,000. And by that, in that sense, you are actually balancing your collateral or balancing your LTV ratio. And option number three, you can add more to your collateral. Like mm -hmm. let's say you have one Bitcoin in collateral, you have one more, you don't want to be liquidated, you can add one more to collateral. Now these are three options, but if you don't do anything, then uh, we have a system that automatically indicates when it's, uh, when it's time for you to be liquidated. So you get to force liquidation uh, status 
uh, or process. And even uh, uh, even by that, you still uh, will have some time um, to maybe ha- somehow solve this issue. So we'll, you will have 24 hours to react on the liquidation. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're we're pretty we're pretty friendly in terms of liquidation. We don't want that to to happen very often, to be honest. But of course, we will protect. Uh, in that case, we will protect the lender interest. Good. Uh, I was uh, I was hearing you, and I was thinking because, of course, uh, I understand that if you are mod- more collateral, you track that uh, as as you have full track of the multi sig, no? So you see mm-hmm. that the collateral grew, and and then uh, he has more room. Uh, yeah. What about if uh, you repay part of your loan? How how, do, yeah. how does Len track that? Uh, let's say USDT uh, in Ethereum. Let's say uh, how do you track that? Is it uh, in inside the the contract view? Yeah, also? you can you can actually send uh, send uh, let's say USDT to a lender's address, like let's say one thousand USDT. When you send that, you click on the button. I've sent the funds. And then you can upload the link to a uh, blockchain explorer, let's say token view. We use token view at the moment. We will add more blockchain explorers. You can upload the link where, where we will see that, hey, that, that has been done. And actually lender also confirms that he received that money. So there's a two person saying, confirming that, uh, that uh, they have sent the money. And there's also third side, which is, uh, our, our support manager who can always go to contract and check uh, the respectable link to, to this transaction. Mm-hmm. This is the good part of using all, let's say, blockchain-based yeah. currencies, no? Yeah, yeah. You can always check out. And uh, um, yeah, that's, that's why we, 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 we actually want to stick with stable coins because you can always double check yourself that transaction was made. Hmm. Uh, some of these stable coins, let's say that are more decentralized. Some of them are uh, really centralized. In fact, they can freeze uh, funds uh, from, of yeah. uh, people. Uh, um, have you thought about th- those possibilities that uh, okay you can freely move them you don't have that much of a of compliance like you have with uh, fiat but uh, have you thought about those scenarios that when i don't know i think usdc is uh, pretty decentral i uh, pretty centralized uh, and those scenarios that uh, something can go <laughs> nasty maybe well, we of course thought about all the scenarios, all the possible scenarios. But again, this is type of scenario that, uh, for example, uh, some people think that uh, teaser can like can stop existing at some point. Uh, who knows? We never know. Like you know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, as uh, for example, uh, everyone knows Giacomo Zucco. He always says that Bitcoin is still an experiment. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's also a tricky question, you know, when people ask what will happen if at some point you wake up and there's no Bitcoin, like mm-hmm. something happened on the global scale. And and uh, we also don't uh, we, we don't think we, we can't expect that this possibility, but we don't think about it, honestly. But in sense of freezing funds, um, well, it's actually the risk of uh, of the lender and the borrower. You know, the same can be in a fiat system. You know, bank just can freeze your funds when you try to repay something, and that's it. You don't get a repayment, or something else is happening, or you locked in your Bitcoin to custodial platform, then they sent you I don't know five thousand USD. And in one month, your bank account is closed and you cannot repay it. And the, the time is ticking and you're liquidated. Hmm. There's different opportunities, there's different threats. And uh, as I say, uh, nobody told you that being your own bank is easy. You need to weight all your risks. And we just provide, we basically just provide the technical tools. 
uh, it's always up to you to manage your risks. And, exactly. and, which, and, uh, and also there's actually people who are like, hey, I'm not using USDT because uh, they have this beef with uh, government, with different governments or with one, which is a public information. Uh, instead of this, I'm using another stable coin. Or, hey, I'm not going to use uh, USDT on Ethereum. Uh, I prefer USDT on Liquid. Why? Because I think there's less risk for me. So it's up to up to any person to decide uh, where are the risks, weigh them, and use appropriate technical tools to hedge those risks. An open market for people to choose whatever they they want. Yeah, that's that's actually the idea behind uh, one of the core values of our products. You know, I, I we we tend to hear sometimes like uh, it's not as well. It's not a big secret that some of uh, traders, for example, on Hodl Hodl platform, they do KYC on themselves. You know, they require KYC. Even though we as a platform don't require this, but they do that on their own. Uh, they can be uh, licensed brokerage companies and all that stuff. And there are also some of the traders who don't require this. So when when people start criticizing us, you know, there I went to Hodl Hodl and there was a guy who, who asked me for my private information. Well, it's a free market. You are free to choose to, to with, with whom you want to work. You can, in the end, you can publish your own offer. Mm. And um, that's it. We, we believe in a free market, you know. That's, mm. that's the, one of the ideas. Mm. Uh, I wanted to ask you, because you, you, you choose, you, you explained before, which are the stable coins available. I, yeah. I, I want to ask you, because there is... A, a, this stable coin money on chain based on uh, the RSK sidechain and yeah. it's it's, uh, it's kind of like as liquid and USDT uh, this one is like uh, quite decentralized and th let's say like the more uh, Bitcoin stable coin that uh, probably you yeah. can find no? yeah. uh, how is the process I, I, do you have in mind like adding uh, other stable coins in the future and and, and why would you do that? Yeah, we actually have in mind, we have a list of stable coins that we want to add, uh, which is um, one, one of the things we want to add. And, uh, but actually, um, I, I, I'm not sure we're going to add them in, in, in like upcoming months or in, in, in the recent future, because we have, um, in distant future because we have uh, like so much on our roadmap, but I know mm -hmm. about the money on chain. I, I, I'm already, we're already speaking with their team and uh, we also have in plans adding other uh, stable coins, but yeah, that, that could be something interesting, you know, uh, borrowing, um, borrowing and using Bitcoin as a collateral and receiving stable coin that is based on, on top of Bitcoin, which is basically you can do now with the USDT uh, on liquid to some extent, but uh, money on chain will be a different story. So yeah, we're considering this. Yes. Uh, you just announced, uh, I think it has to be a big news for you, uh, that now U.S. citizens can use uh, land. Uh, yeah. As far as I know, I think that they cannot use uh, Hodl Hodl. Am I right? No, no, they cannot yet. They cannot. We're still, okay. we're still uh, doing our legal, uh, uh, legal work there. So uh, we 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 need some time. We want to be uh, like hundred percent sure that that everything will 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 be fine in that sense. Yeah. Yeah, uh, when, with, when I... with the land, with the land, there's a bit different story because we don't use any fiat in there, only mm -hmm. stable coins. So it's 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 a global actually story. We don't have any ge geographical lo locations available there. So basically, yeah, it's it's a bit more appropriate for that market. So yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to see what uh, what's next to come in 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 Hodel Hodel ecosystem. I could say now, uh, yeah. 
and and yeah it was a, a great talk with you of course i will put thank the link uh, uh, down in in the description and thank you. And, and yeah max i i what there is something that i really look forward and it's kind of sad uh, of another sad thing of this 2020 and it's to see you again in baltic honey badger <laughs> this is yeah. also another element of the ecosystem that uh, yeah. this year was uh, very missed by many of us. Uh, yes, I do agree with that. We also, uh, but as, as I mentioned at one of the of the again at one of the podcasts during um, during one of my presentation, I told two guys that. Uh, we wouldn't be able to release the landing platform that fast if we would have a honey badger. So, uh, at least something. yeah, at least something. At least we uh, we delivered. Uh, well, I I want to believe we delivered a good solution for the whole ecosystem because if you will take a deep dive uh, into exploring the lending markets in in, in Bitcoin, there's no. Uh, or there's a small amount of peer-to-peer -peer lending available out there. Most of the lenders are custodial, centralized, uh, and doesn't allow to to be you in charge of your privacy data and all that stuff. So I I, I hope that it, it's you know as they say it's a it's a, I, I would paraphrase this, but for us it's a big step and hopefully. Uh, a small step for the whole ecosystem as well, in in a, in a, in a, in a, in a correct direction, I would say, in the right direction. A very moony uh, sentence. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and we know how everything, all this ecosystem is related with the moon. So yeah, uh, so yeah, a nice a nice sentence to to finish the post this podcast. Uh, thank you, Max. Uh, we keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much.